are going to be looking to do today is to have a panel discussion that is focused over. Let me change my little view here. Uh, that is focused over code swapping. Uh, so we are going to take the definition of code swapping. Uh, has many different lives, many different definitions. We're going to use one that is coming from the Harvest Harvard Business Review. And the definition of code swapping that we're going to be going from uh, broadly code switching involves adjusting one's style of speech, appearance, behavior, and expression in ways that will optimize the comfort of others in exchange for fair treatment, quality service, and employment opportunities. Uh, so we are going to be looking to get the lens and perspective from different people to address the same to uh, address the same questions. Uh, so I'd like for everyone to have an open mind and to adjust this with some compassionate curiosity as we seek to understand how everybody from whichever perspective they're coming from is dealing with the same concept and the same idea of how to phrase our words and how to uh, use them for maximum effectiveness. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and kind of talk through our panelists. I'll allow you guys to kind of introduce yourself and go ahead and kind of answer the first question as it basically is just the most uh, broad introduction here. And I'm going to ask you just to simply introduce yourself, tell us a little something about yourself, and then answer the question, how has code switching impacted your professional and or personal personal life? And then for all the participants, we do have a Q&A session down there in the bottom of the chat. Uh, as I am listening to our panelists, I'm going to be trying my best to interact with you. And for those of you that are in the room, we want to send you home with something amazing that is useful, something that will get you thinking. And so if you have particular questions that we could uh, have created here uh, for this panel, let's do it. Uh, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and uh, start it off. So with uh, our panelists here, who would like to take the reins and uh, start us off with uh, how has code swapping, code switching impacted your professional and or personal life? Here, I'll get us started. Hello, uh, my name is Billy Hooten. I'm a project executive for a cage machine construction here in the, uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area. And code, code switching for me is really something that I work hard with when, I, when I'm dealing with subcontractors or developers or clientele. Each one has a different set of lingo, different dress pattern that I've got to go with. So for me, when I really think about code switching, it's dealing with the, uh, the team members I work with in my professional life. Um, hi, my name is Sherry Boyd. I'm a faculty member at um, Dallas College, North Lake Campus. But before I was a professor, I had my own band. And so mm -hmm. there was a whole bunch of code switching going on because I had to book my own band and I had to deal with um, agents that booked my band. So there was a different way that I interacted with them. Um, than I did when I was on stage. And also, as far as my professional life as a faculty member, do I, 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 it depends on who I'm talking to. And I think that is for all of us. But I think as a black woman, I am very cognizant of how I use my speech. I am cognizant of, of how I use my face. Because if I use my face too much, then I, I automatically become either that angry black woman or um, somebody else is trying to interpret my feelings. So it's, it's, it's very, um, for me, weighted <laughs> sometimes to have to code switch back and forth. Hello, everyone. I'm Crystal Karchival. I am a student at DCCD and um, code switching for me um, with owning my own businesses and um, having two children. Uh, one has graduated, but she was in private school and having a son in private school. Uh, they were predominantly Caucasian. So having to deal with um, code switching there with the booster clubs and the bar mitzvahs and having to interact with the parents were different. And um, just being my age and having to do that is um, it's becoming something new to my parents as well, because they didn't really have to do that as much as I, I'm having to do it now. And 
code switching to me, um, it has hindered my business and it has hurt my business. Um, and it's not as easy as people think it is, but it's um, it's something that I have to do on a daily basis. All right. Well, thank you so much. I feel like we're going to have some uh, good variety as we approach this today. So thank you for sharing. And uh, I would just like to say as a general rule for the things that you volunteer, I feel like those will make some really good points for our fellow panelists to kind of maybe even pose a question and to go back and forth. But as a quick reminder, you are never uh, uh, required to share anything that is uncomfortable or just something that you're not wanting to uh, overly uh, discuss. Uh, but to, to keep it moving along, our next one, and we'll start with you again, Billy. Uh, are there any times in your life that where you had failed to code, to code switch? And if so, what were the negative repercussions of choosing not to, to do that? Uh, Sherry just mentioned about how aware she has to be uh, of her ability to manage her facial expressions and, and words. And so has there ever been a time when you came to the realization where I don't want to, to play the game the way that it's being played? And if so, uh, may, we may not get responses from each of the panelists here, which is fine. But what would those uh, examples be? Billy? Oh, for, for me, you know, I, put a, I put a lot of thought into this when I was asked to, to be a part of this panelist and really trying to understand how Code Switch affected me on a daily basis. You know, and a lot of my a lot of my life is built around the construction industry, right? So a lot of my personal life, I don't change who I am, and I really don't change who I am on a day to day basis. So I don't feel like I've ever really failed to code switch with the people that I deal with on a daily basis. Which you know, a lot of it is, you know, the construction workers. So a lot of it is Hispanic construction workers, my team members who come across from across the pond who are, who are from uh, Indian cultures. I can't really say that I have have really failed to do that. And I really don't feel like I've had any kind of negative impact from doing, from not code switching. I've always managed to to be fair in, in my analysis of, of whoever I was dealing with, whether they were, you know, Hispanic, Mexican, or, or whatever the case may be. So I can't really say that I've had any any negative feedback from from not code switching. Um, I wanted to speak to what Crystal, uh, Crystal talked about her kids are in private school. Crystal, I taught at a private school and my daughter was in a private school also. So before I taught at her school, um, and they probably hired me mainly because she was there, but it, it was to get used to all of the primarily white parents that I had to deal with um, as, a, as a, a parent and then had to deal with a parent and as a teacher was, was, was very interesting. I was there for 11 years. I taught at, I taught at the Hockaday School, which is all girls college mm -hmm. prep. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very interesting time to, to be there. <laughs> um, and um, I, I went in when, when they hired me, I went in and my hair was straight at the time. And in between the years that I was there, I transitioned into locks. That was, uh, to, again, going back to coat switching, it, it goes all the way down to physically how you present yourself how you present your hair, especially if you are a black woman, because there are still places that, you know, California had to pass a law that says you can't not hire me because of how I decide to wear my hair naturally. And so it's, it's still those things in the 21st century that as a black woman, I'm still dealing with. And are there times, yes, that I have failed to code switch? Absolutely, I didn't fail, I intentionally didn't code switch because I was a little mad and I needed I needed mm -hmm. people to see the angry black woman mm -hmm. uh, that was there. And so did it serve me well? Sometimes it did not serve me well. Um, and I was put in my place. But what I have learned in that is um, I, I use I messages and I, I learned this early on. I said, I am sure you did not mean to ignore me as I was standing here for the last 15 minutes and you helped those other people who came behind me. So mm -hmm. can I talk to your manager, please? Because mm -hmm. these are these are still issues that are still happening every day. 
And so um, I've been told as a black woman, I don't talk black enough. Um, and then plus on top of that, my name is Sherry. So sometimes when when they, they see me and Sherry comes, they don't expect a black Sherry, they expect a white Sherry. So those are all the things that for me of, of choosing not to code switch, it's usually very intentional not to do that. I agree with you, Sherry, um, because my name is Crystal Kirchival. They don't expect to see a black woman. And um, me, I actually, like you said, I failed a couple of times because I was just angry. Um, unfortunately, I had to take care of my brother when I was younger. So me having to take him to school and deal with his teachers, and I just, I, I went off because she needed to know how upset I was that you were treating this black child this way. So I, I totally understand what you're saying. And also I, I lost a job because of it, because I, I, I just, I lost it. And sometimes, um, sometimes it's not fair because you feel, because I feel like it, it's, it's just a feeling that I get when people make me have to code switch when I am trying to express something to you and you don't understand the way I'm talking to you right now. So I have to get louder. So I have to pronounce more. I have to um, articulate. I, sometimes you just, sometimes you just don't want to do it. But us being the world that we are, we have to. And it's unfortunate. And I don't like it, but it's true. <laughs> well, and we have the the we have the double whammy I call against us being a woman and being mm -hmm. black mm -hmm. is um, two things that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I, I see my white colleague, colleagues who are women and in, in the faculty can be angry in a meeting. Mm -hmm. I cannot, however. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a pass that I do not get uh, when I'm upset. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, um, one of the things that we are going to uh, maybe jump a little bit uh, towards, uh, but just that concept right there of, uh, of intersectionality and the systems of oppression and discrimination that can all kind of work in unison. Uh, one of the themes I just picked up from uh, each of you in your discussions is how code swapping can be done to either make somebody feel like they belong or make somebody feel like they do not belong. And uh, just simply using the words and the lingo that prove that you are a local. Uh, just a, a real quick uh, thing from my own life. When I was in grad school, I am working in this office place where I am uh, basically the, the boss. I'm overseeing some undergraduate students, but they've all been there for their whole lives. They know this world like the inside and out. And so when they say, hey, go to the graveyard and pick up this thing for me. Well, you have no idea what that is because they're using their lingo. This is the lingo that they have used. And so uh, instantly, just by using one word, you're sending that message. You don't belong here. You don't know how things operate. I know how things operate. And uh, and that's just one tiny minor example. Uh, so if we could uh, take a take a moment to kind of uh, address that topic and just kind of showing how these things uh, maybe in a small way play on each other to put you in that. Uh, I think the most uh, simple way to look at it is uh, you don't belong in the situation where you should. <laughs> uh, you know what, Joby, uh, you know this about me. So my um, my husband is white. And when I don't want a deal, I just send him. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm like, baby, you need to go take care of this because I can't. Um, and they're gonna listen to you and they're not gonna listen to me. And that has been true in so many ways. Um, I will go to, I'll give you an example. I will go to a dealership look, looking for a car and uh, I will get quoted a higher price, um, less, attachments or whatever accoutrement to the car for the higher price and my husband can go look at the same car and get a better price than I do. Why? And and part of it is I'm female and then part of it is because I'm I'm black. Because um and then we have a mixed daughter. I wish she was here. So she has a whole different other experience of code switching 
because everybody thinks that she's Dominican or, you know, Hispanic, because that's what she looks like. I understand because my son, he's very, very fair skinned and he does go to a private school, but he has to switch between the two. So I do understand that. And to be discriminated against because of of the code switching has been probably my life because I do, I own a a bakery, Annabelle Sweet Treats. And then I, um, I have heavenly places, which I do candles and essential oils and um, stuff like that for your body. And then um, this year I started Mary Kay. And being a part of um, a predominantly Caucasian team has been a struggle for me because of the code switching. Um, because I have had to um, because I've had to not be myself, basically. And it's hard not being yourself when you just want to give people your your all, and you can't give a hundred percent a hundred percent sometime when you're when you're not giving yourself your true self. Yeah. Uh, Billy, uh, any any thoughts as far as people using code switching to make you or uh, others to feel like they're out of place or or not belonging? No, again, guys, you know, I, I look at the way that I go about my, my life from both a personal and professional side of things. And, and and again, attitude is free, right? So from the way I look at it, it's the way that I perceive it or I go about it and I interact with, with the different cultures. I mean, so I, I can't really tell you that I have, have, have experienced any negative feedback from, from code switching. I mean, I entered... I work with the Hispanic culture every day, right? And I speak zero Spanish. But at, but we're able to do what we need to do. I mean, we're we're building hundred million dollar projects. We make sure that we're 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 on time, you know. So I personally don't have the same issues that that some of my peers may have, and maybe that's just because of the way that I I go about my day to day stuff because I I don't really change about who I am or or the way I was raised or any of that kind of, of, of obstacles. So I can't say that I've experienced the same obstacles that, that someone else has. Very nice. Um, we have a, uh, some, some activity in the chat. So I wanted to take a, a quick a step to the side and uh, address this issue. And uh, I like this one. A question from the chat, uh, when you do code switch, uh, do you do it around your work friends or just around your boss or your higher ups? You know, I'll answer that. I mean, for, for me, it's, you know, I have a way that I, I come to work when I'm out on the site, right? I'm wearing blue jeans, boots and, and so forth. And the lingo, the lingo that we talk and, and, and work through out on the site is completely different when I sit in in a, a conference room with the president of my company or a developer, you know, I have a certain different dress attire because that's what's expected when I walk into that door for, for that particular role that I'm in. Uh, so I, I do a lot of code switching in between the, the staff and the personnel that I, I'm around. Um, so if I feel comfortable with a group of people, uh, that I work with, which I have a, we, we have kind of a faculty pod where, where, well, when we're on campus, <laughs> which we haven't been, but we have a faculty pod where there are five of us all in this one space. And I would say I probably don't code switch when I'm in that pod because I feel comfortable with all of those people that are there and I feel like they're not gonna judge me. And I really feel like I can bring my real self to the table when I'm in that pod. If I'm dealing with a dean and above, <coughs> you betcha, I'm, I'm coming with my, I guess I would call it a shield. My shield is up. I wanna make sure mm-hmm. you perceive me in a certain way. I wanna make sure you mm-hmm. perceive me professionally. I mean, we all do that. That is not, that is not something indicative of, of me. We all, when we're dealing with people that um, are not in our circle are going to code switch because that's that's what we do. 
but it's it's the fact that you have to train yourself and actually it's not when i when i go back and think of the intersectionality of that my mother would never let me uh speak slang ever mm -hmm. my mother was very intentional about me not speaking black slang mm -hmm. and corrected me on an intentional basis my mother was a teacher my dad was the first police officer in odessa texas and the first black police officer that Odessa, Texas hired. And so there was um, there was a standard that I had to I had to meet uh, with my parents first before I got to go into the world. So um, even though they they were. I, I, they were intentionally. I don't know if it was intentional or not. But they were teaching me to code switch from the youngest age I can remember. Mm -hmm. I agree with Sherry. Um, it's it depends on if I'm if I am close to those coworkers or not. Um, there are a couple of people that are on my uh, on my team that I actually don't code switch with. But if I'm at work, I'm at work. So that means that I'm probably going to code switch just because I want to make sure that everybody knows me around me. It's the, I'm the same every day at work, but mm -hmm. I'm different when I leave work. And like she said, my parents taught me from a very young age, this is the way you sit, this is the way you go, this is how you eat. They, from a very young age, and they are still on me about the way I speak <laughs> because I do speak slang sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, and, in, and also in making the choice to send my daughter to Hockaday School, which is all mm -hmm. girls college prep, she was there from fourth grade on. So there were, I, I, I intentionally tried not to teach her about code switching, but the world teaches you about code mm -hmm. switching. And there was a certain way she knew she was going to act when she was at the Hockaday school versus mm -hmm. when she was playing in the yard with her friends. That was, mm -hmm. you know, that's just the way it is. But she has integrated those two worlds her white world and her black world, she has integrated that very well into what she does. She's a, um, I have to brag on her. She is a tech director, lighting designer. She worked for a corporate firm in Washington, DC. That's where she is now. And um, she has learned to be herself like on all, on all levels. And it's, it's really amazing to me to watch um, that she's done that, but being a biracial child, she she has had to kind of balance who she is because I, I can't even be in her world because she's biracial. So there are things that she had to learn on her own just being out there that I, I could not teach her as her black mom. And, and there were things that her white dad couldn't teach her being her white dad. So I, I love the person she has evolved into because she has so embraced both sides. All right, well, we have a nice active uh, part to our chat. I think I'm gonna try to finish our, our questions that we had planned on and then time permitting, uh, we can continue to, to linger around. Actually, there's the two questions at the end I'd, I'd like to save as our kind of sign off where you're gonna give us your own best tips that you have found uh, that work. Uh, so I want to go to the question three from our list uh, that code switching can be both intentional and accidental. Have there been any times in your life where you inadvertently realized that you were code switching? And if so, when did you become aware of this and was it a good or a bad thing? For no. me, it, it has been um, sometimes inadvertently uh, be, because my, my two children went to a private school, we would get in the car and they would be like, mom, why are you talking like that? What, what's going on? And I was like, <laughs> I couldn't say anything. So um, they are very brutal and harsh when it comes to that, because every time, you know, they will tell me, hey, mom, you, what you doing? What, what are you doing? And um, that's, that's, that, those are the times when I really noticed that I was code switching. My parents would do it too, but my husband, he is, um, <laughs> he'll look at me a certain way and I'm like, okay, I must be code switching. I must be saying something that 
not the my norm. Now I'm with you on there. I've got some some peers of mine that are that are different races, and there's times that that we'll be talking, and then I'll start, you know, trying to talk like them and and cut up and go on, and and it's it it becomes rather funny more than it is, you know, a, a negative impact on it. But no, I I'm the same way on that. Mm -hmm. My husband is funny when he tries to code switch. I was like, go on, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> especially when he's around my family. So um, it's rare that our families, both the sides get together. Uh, but when they do, it's funny to watch the interaction of the black people and the white people all together who don't really get to see each other. And they are together just because Mark and I are married. And so um, that's that's always been amusing and wonderful and crazy all at the same time when that happens. But uh, inadvertently code switching uh, a couple of times in meetings, sometimes when something catches me off guard. And um, I think it's, I, I, I don't like what's being said. I, I, will, I will switch into, you know, what, what are you talking about? And that's inappropriate and no, or, you know, I don't mind calling people out mm -hmm. uh, at all. Uh, I, I do know that to be to be true. <laughs> and uh, it's a good thing to have people of high character, because as long as you know where your where your alley is, you're going to be good. Uh, that, will, that will be a net positive for the world. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I do want to, we're, we're starting to get a lot more uh, activity here in the chat. So thank you for those of you who are uh, asking. Uh, Billy, there is a specific question for you. I'm not sure if you are going to have uh, a, an answer, but the question is, have you encountered a time when you noticed someone of another race uh, trying to, uh, code switching, trying to relate to you? You know, I've got, you... I've got uh, Hispanic guys that, that work for me, right? And you'll you'll start seeing those guys try to integrate to what the office caliber is of, of kind of where I work at a lot as well of them trying to, to, to pull that same lingo kind of dress outside of what their realm is day to day and then try to pull themselves into to being able part of those conversations which is a good thing we're all open to that but I, I do notice from time to time that there are guys that that want to try to to mirror the way that I go about doing my stuff and then interact with some of the some of the higher leadership within our company very nice uh, let's see, we have a few more. Uh, so uh, let's see, uh, Kim asked, do you ever use code switching to try to make others feel more comfortable or accepted? So an intentional use that you know in this situation, in this uh, setting, that you're going to try to make people feel more comfortable by not saying this and now saying that. Absolutely. I'm some knock, some, okay, oh, yeah. a lot of, lot of shaking heads. Uh, Crystal, let's start off with, with you, uh, then uh, Sherry can follow up. Okay. Uh... I, I do it quite often. Um, I do a virtual Zoom Bible study. And um, but again, there are a lot of Caucasian women. So it's a lot of things I can't say uh, a certain way, the way I feel like I should say it uh, because of that. And a lot of things that I don't do on and off camera because of that. And a lot of, like, like Sherry said before, my face tells Sometimes my facial expression will um, let you know how I feel. So I, I have to sit back and really judge how my face is looking. Um, absolutely. So um, I, I, I mitigate my face. Actually, I take that back. As I get older, I, I tend not to mitigate my face. <laughs> I, I allow you to to see my face fully. I, I think that um, that that's a that's a shift for me, um, bringing my real self to the table. Because everything that I'm reading that I know of is that when I bring my real self to the table, and you accept the real self that I bring to the table, I I come up with a lot more ideas. I'm much more engaged. Mm -hmm rather than me trying to work through a shield to make sure that you're comfortable. And, and I mean, I want you to be comfortable, but I don't want me to be uncomfortable just to make you comfortable. So that's, 
that's a hard line to walk to walk it really is yeah uh very very difficult and just on so many different uh levels along those lines uh, Sherry, a follow-up question for you. Uh, Sherry, do you find that people around you think you are code switching when you're actually not? Yes, they do. Um, so it is, I, my daughter, when she was younger, she was like, oh, you're using your white girl voice. And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> I am, I'm using my white girl voice. <laughs> So that has uh, uh, that's been um, that that's been a real funny thing between us for her to recognize that, especially at um, um, when she was so young that she was recognizing that I was going in and out of how I talked at home versus how I talked when I took her to school when she was at Hockaday. All right, so we're going to be uh, kind of winding down with our two uh, final questions of about 15 minutes of time set for those. And then after that, we'll finish up any other questions in the chat. Thank you chat for participating and being so active there. Uh, so it's kind of a, a two part here. Uh, so the first part we're going to be looking for are what are the greatest challenges that stand in the way of people using code swap code switching effectively? Uh, so one of the things that just from when I, when I uh, think of that question, I think of marketing and people who are trying to align themselves with like sports fans, the the lingo that's used to try to make you sound like you're one of the team. Uh, it's always seems so forced. It seems so unnatural. And I think code swapping for a like, I have a purpose. I'm going to try to code swap in order to, you know, get hired. I'm going to try to code swap to become a better friend, try to code swap to be a better son. Uh, I feel like that's very difficult. Uh, so without giving advice on how to fix it, just simply talking about the difficulty and the problem side, uh, what makes it so difficult? And I would encourage you to pull from your own lives. Uh, what makes it hard for you to manage your code swapping and to do it effectively? And I'll start over there with you, Billy. Yeah, for, for me, it's, it's, it's I, I don't want to put on a, a, a front of somebody that I'm not really am, right? So. My, my biggest hurdle is if I, I want to go in there and I sit in these meetings, I'm really going to bring myself to the table because if I, I portray a different image than what I really am later on in, in into the position or later on in the conversation, your true self is going to eventually come out, right? So for, for me, it's I truly go be in as who I am opposed to trying to be somebody that I'm not. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Uh Billy, do you think that that's easier for you to do because you are a white male? No, I think it's easier to do because I'm secure of who I am, to be honest with you. I mean, I I grew up poor. I grew up in a farming community. I grew up in the Midwest. Uh, I, I grew up on the basketball courts playing with the uh, with, with, with black boys and going to those schools. So, I mean, I was I was brought up by my parents to really go be who you are. Don't don't change who you are to make somebody else like you. You know, you're either going to like me for who I am, because at the end of the day, this is really who I am. Whether you see me at work or you see me at the grocery store, you know, when you walk up to Billy, you're going to get Billy. You're not going to get Billy sitting behind the desk or a construction site. You're, you're going to get Billy. So, I mean, it's it's me just being honest with who I am and then being able to to interact with with other races and, and kind of come. Out. But, yeah, I don't. I don't go in looking at it. It's an it's an advantage for me being white or male or or any scenarios like that. I mean, I go in with it as this is really just who I am day to day. Okay, I have something to add to that. Um, my dad, he uh, he owns his own construction business. Uh, he's been doing it. Uh, I will be forty next year. He's been doing it for over forty six years. And um, unfortunately, um, he has a Caucasian man that's the face of the company, not him. And um, before he was the face, uh, he wasn't getting as much business. But since he's been getting business, he's actually in um, uh, 
what is that? Um, he's in Lake Charles, Louisiana, um, rebuilding homes there. So um, it does it does make a difference. All right, and then um, a kind of our our final kind of planned question. Uh, and then after that, we'll move over to some some questions if they are available. And it's really going to be from your experience, from the successes and failures that you've encountered. Uh, what advice would you share with your friends, family members, coworkers on how to code switch effectively? It's definitely difficult. It definitely has huge dividends and payouts if you can do it. Uh, but as Billy says, you you really need to be true to yourself and not be fake or false while being fake and false. So, <laughs> you know, just in general, uh, what is it that you have found that has uh, been successful in your in your life? Well, I, I, you know, and I learned this from um, the speech people, perception is 100% your reality. And so if somebody's going to perceive me in a certain way, that's their reality. I cannot change that. And, um, but I do, I, I, I do as a black woman have to protect myself because mm -hmm. I, I have been in a world where uh, I have been uh, talked to negatively just by walking into the door, ignored, um, wanting people, people wanting to hire me just because of the, the color of my skin and mm -hmm. gender. And there are jobs that I have turned down because I, I just don't want to be the first. I don't want to be the first one in the door. Uh, that's I've, I've done that too many times in my life, and that is a hard place to be all the time to be the first mm -hmm. and only. Uh, mm -hmm. I've 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 been in too many places where I'm one of two, or or the only person that looks like me there, and that is a difficult world to to, to live in. And I just I I still don't trust the world enough to put uh, the whole world uh, to put my whole self out there. So you're only going to get a piece of my reality until you prove to me that you're not going to hurt me. And um, I, I find it, it it's effective to, to go in with um, my shield up to kind of figure out the lay of the land. And I think we all do that. But uh, the lay of the land for me has been harsher for me than it's been for my husband. And uh, he didn't get to really see that until he started raising a biracial child and some of the abuses that he watched his child have. And that is when I feel like he really understood code switching and why we had to go back and forth because he brings him, he brings himself to the table too. And I love every bit of him, but that is his experience in the world has been different for him than it's been for me. And so that's the reason why I feel like I, you know, I want to protect her and I, I have to protect me. I agree with Sherry. We do have to put up that shield. But um, as code switching being fake and phony, um, when I code switch, I, I'm definitely not fake and phony. I am just um, not, I'm saying things in a certain way to a certain person. It's not saying anything that I wouldn't say. It's just saying it a certain way. So that it's not perceived like I'm trying to hurt you or don't be afraid. That's that's the perception I want you to have of me. Now, if I, I could be fake and phony, but that's not true to myself, as she said before. And as Billy said, you have to be true to yourself. And that's what I, I know I do and I've done throughout my life, because when you pretend, that's when you're like, okay, I can't do this job anymore because I'm, I'm being somebody who I can't be. You can't live up to a standard that you weren't born to live up to, period. So uh, it, it can be effective. It can, be, it can cost a lot, depending on who you are and who you work with. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I mean, I think you just got to be really selective and careful on how you go about code switching and, and who you actually code switch with. You know, that would be my that would be my advice to to my friends and family and, and, and coworkers and peers. It's 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 you really got to hold yourself and be true to yourself and then be very cautious of how you start trying to interact with certain people in a different way. You know, so I just think you just got to be real careful with that whole 
code switching back and forth and, and trying to fit into something that that you're really not going to fit in with and when when the real you comes out. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, just to add on to, to what uh, Crystal was saying, uh, Brandy helped me out with our chat. Uh, that theme that you just talked about of uh, being authentic about yourself and uh, it's one of the things this is uh, this panel is being recommended or, or helping advertise from our common book uh, notes from a young black chef and one of the things that Kwame talks about is how he has lived these many lives and that he is all of these people that he has been throughout his life he is the the chef that graduated from the the greatest CIA culinary institute that's us there he is all these different things and so when you think of code swapping that way, I think that's really some of the best advice that we could give is that you are tapping into all the wisdom that you have lived through that part of your life. And so when you're talking about that area, you are advocating for those people, that group, that um, just culture that you're going to, to, to share. So, yeah, thank you for, for, for sharing that. And we are seeing a bunch of questions kind of uh, coming in. We'd like to keep this under an hour for uh, for uh, peak efficiency and for the uh, our, our guests. I know our panelists and many have taken off of work to be able to be here today. So thank you so much for for doing that. Um, I think you guys can see some of the questions as they are popping up. I'll go ahead and read them off uh, as some of them have been addressed to you guys uh, particularly. Uh, so Crystal, uh, there is one here at the bottom for you. Crystal, did you feel the need to code switch with faculty when you first entered college? Or did you feel comfortable to simply being yourself without uh, thinking about that? It depended on the teacher. Um, I had a great teacher this semester. Um, I, I really loved that she um, she understood um, she understood her students, and I was able to talk to her the way I usually talk to my mother or you know anyone else that I uh, hold in high regard but there is another teacher that I have um, I could not speak to her the same way um, because she um, and sometimes it's the way you grow up as well sometimes people don't understand um, your your history your background because they don't know you so um, I had to interact with her differently um, is it all the teachers? No. Um, a lot of the teachers I've had, they've been really great that I really haven't had to code switch. So I'm blessed. But in the end, I've had to code switch, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, wonderful. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, let's see. Uh, I just wanted to, to, sh to share something uh, real, real quickly from my educational experience, and it is something that I feel like just in general as society, we have come leaps and bounds over the few past few decades just as it relates to uh, appropriate language and trying to use the most accurate terms for what it is that we are discussing. Um, I received one of my favorite memories from graduate school is uh, I was in a class of like organizational communication class and these lectures are from a professor who had been there for years. And one of the things that he would always do is just sprinkle in these large GRE words that no normal human ever uses in conversation and he used them correctly. It was probably on his script. And if you were to raise your hand and ask like, hey, what does that word mean that I've never heard before because I'm 20? Uh, he wouldn't tell you. He would say it again and then continue on his way. So as graduate students, we would write these words down and then go outside of class and look them up in our actual physical dictionary. And that, in my opinion, helped elevate and to bring me up to these academics that are just fantastic. Uh, I feel in a way that is bad advice now as it uh, relates to simply using words that aren't making people feel comfortable and depending on what role you are and what class you're teaching uh, to be able to, it's kind of the opposite of what I think I'm wanting out of my classes now. I still want the elevated discussion, but I want to do it in a way that is so welcoming and, and, and inviting that it doesn't necessarily mean that half the room can't uh, participate. Uh, so. Trying to think of a way to turn that into a question. I'm just going to raise the tone of my voice and see if anybody could uh, <laughs> add something to the end of that. Um, well, um, 
See, you talk about that happening in school when I was when, when I would sit down at the table with my mom and dad and my cousin. If I asked my mother what a word meant, she would say, go look it up. Go, go look at the dictionary. So, no, I do not have a problem. If I use a word in the class and a student asked me that, I was like, you have your cell phone, Google that. I want you to know what that word means and you, you know, tell me back in class. So uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't feel like that I'm excluding them. I, I'm going with the elevating of, uh, and, and it, it's not even intentional that I use that word. It is because of how I grew up. Remember, my mother was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. My dad was a cop. So it was, I, I was in school even when I wasn't in school. <laughs> I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I, I'm currently taking a course right now and the teacher is like, go look the word up. And when I look the word up, I feel better. I feel um, I feel great about knowing this new word because um, like like you like you said before, it some teachers, they don't they 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 just they give you something. So that you can grasp it. I think that they're giving it to you so that you can grasp the whole lesson. Because I know me, me looking, just reading something, uh, sometimes you want to skip that word. But um, as I get older, I'm learning that you can look it up and really know what that word means and really uh, get a comprehension of what's going on. All right. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up here. We have a few questions left. Uh, so I'd like to to ask uh, this first one here. Uh, let's see, it's from Marianne. My friend found that she needed to protect her kids by code switching. Being black, she felt she needed to make sure her kids, when little, always looked so cute when they were going to McDonald's. I didn't get it. My son was a mess when we would go to McDonald's until she explained why she code switched. Uh, so is that a statement or, 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 or experience uh, uh, spark I, anything? I agree wholeheartedly um, being a teen mom um, you are looked at a certain way when you go in certain establishments um, we've been blessed to be able to go to nice places and have you know have you know the experiences that we've had but when we didn't have it you want you want them to look good you want them to feel good because looking good helps you feel better that's what I believe but people look at you a certain way. So you have to co switch because if she would have took her kids to McDonald's looking dirty, I'm personally I would have thought, okay, what's wrong with her? What's mm -hmm. wrong? Can she not take care of her kids? That would be mine. So yes, yeah, she had to co switch because if she didn't, you would be looked at a certain way, and that's unfortunately the truth. <laughs> oh, but that's 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 a sexuality thing too. So. Like Correct. if a dad walked in and their kids were all dirty, they would be, oh, they must have been out playing. But if a mom walks mm -hmm. in with mm -hmm. her kids all dirty, that's no, that's unacceptable. But I, I will tell you, though, um, I have when my daughter was a teenager said, you're not going dressed like that, are you? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I have dressed worse. Mm -hmm. Like I put rollers in my hair and I put on some house shoes and I was like, yep, I'm going to go like this then. So she never said that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, it's, it's, uh, I code switch for her because you don't, you know, you don't get to do that. Exactly. I agree. All right. Uh, I think we have uh, one final question. Uh, then I'll just give the final, final floor. If there's anything in your head that you've been thinking about throughout, you didn't know where to, to fit it in to give you one last chance to, to share. But this one was another one from a chat directed towards Billy. I'm going to add a little bit something to it to make it open ended. Uh, Billy, do any of your Hispanic colleagues choose to switch to Spanish when you are present? And so if not that aggressive, do you notice them do any type of code switching to maybe further show the differences between you and, and them? You know, when I when I first moved down here from Missouri and I was starting to work around the Hispanic war sports, would, I would pull in in my foreman meetings and they would start, they would start in English and then they would flip to, to Spanish. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, I'd get irate at it. I'm like, look, guys, I don't understand what you're saying, so let's speak English. You can speak English. And now I've gotten to where I trust a little bit more, but they they do flip to Spanish. Even some of my guys out here on site, they will 
they will they will start talking Spanish all the way across the board, but it's easier for them to communicate with each other, right? So a lot of the guys that do that, I trust them what they're what they're doing. But when I when I first got down here, it used to irate me real a whole lot because I didn't understand what they were talking about, but I needed them to do X. So yeah, I mean they they still do it a little bit, but I I kind of roll with it now. Very nice, thank you. And then Billy, while you still have the floor, any any final thoughts as it relates to code switching this panel about our other panelists that uh, uh, you wanted to sign off with? No, you know, like, like I said when I started, I had no idea what code switching was, and then when I dug into it, and then I kind of got to understanding a little bit more and how how it affected a lot of different people and, and the way we communicate and the way we dressed and and things of that nature. I I've come to embrace it and see it a little bit better here now. But again, it's one of those things that I think we all do it. Some of us are familiar with, some of us are not. But at the end, I think it's going to be something that is is good for for us all in terms of understanding what it, what it really comes across as. Very nice. Uh, all right, Crystal. Uh, any any final thoughts to to share before we sign off? Code switching is not a bad thing. Uh, I believe that it can benefit not just um, the people who are code switching, but those around them. And um, I, I just believe it's a benefit. And it, it is. it can be effective, not just in your daily life, but even um, with your children and your family. So. Yeah, thank you so much. Sherry? I, I would honestly like to see um, a workplace, and I'm hoping that Dallas College is working on that, where I can bring my whole self to the table. Amen. Um, I, 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 I'm going to, if I'm going to an interview, I am, I'm not going to wear flip flops. You know, I'm going to wear, I'm going to adhere to what I need to do to go in for an interview. Um, if I'm going to go and make a presentation, to um, the college president's team, I am going to address that part because that's an expectation that we expect in this society across the board. It's like Billy says, that there's a difference between him talking to the guys that he works with at the site and when he's doing a presentation or working with, um, working with people that are hiring his company. So we, we do that as, as a societal norm. But what I would like to do is just be able to bring my whole self to a committee meeting, to a table that, that I, can, I can ask the hard questions without people thinking that I'm not a team player. That's what I would like. Well, I wanted to thank every single one of you for making it out here today for our full chat and the participants that shared so many questions. Thank you for being actively engaged. Brandy Harris helped organize this event from the back end, and thank you for all the work you do putting this together. And uh, just wanted to uh, let everybody know you can feel free to email me with any questions if you would like. It is my name as shown up there, first initial J, Leahy at dccd.edu. If there are any resources or uh, people I can put you in con contact with with questions, I'm happy to do that. Uh, so I'll hang out here with the with the to just for a few moments for any questions if you wanted to put them into the chat. But that will conclude our panel here on code switching. Thank you so much for showing up and being a part of it.